Oh yeah, now my people, my people, it's your guy Kunle, aka the Nigerian Englishman, and it's your boy Kanebi, aka Mr. Gopo, Gopo, and welcome to another edition of Round on the Ground. Okay, so the best place to start is obviously the top of the table clash, but it was in the FA Cup, Manchester City at home to Arsenal, and. First of all, it was, it was the first time the two best managers in, the, in English football right now went head-to-head. -head. Mikel Arteta against his mentor, Pep Guardiola. And obviously, Manchester City ended up winning that game, can they be? But I want to know, what did we learn from both teams from um, that 90 minutes? What we learned from both teams is um, <laughs> that, ge that game is not going to decide the title race. For sure. And um, we saw... Arsenal in the first half really played very some good football, even if it wasn't their first eleven. But as soon as they lost Thomas Partey in the second half, you could see Man City asserted themselves. They had control of the midfield and they got the goal from Nathan Ake, you know. Uh, and um, for me, I was kind of impressed with what I saw from Arsenal. In and what sense? In in the sense that they had more intensity, they showed no fear, and it was actually their second team. They didn't play with the likes of um, Ben White, no Odegaard. Mm, it was and, up to six changes from their last yeah, picture. Yeah, and you could see that they went in there with no fear, and they played some pretty good football. Tommy also had a nice chance, and Trossard was very impressive on the night. And um, but Man City, obviously, they had what it take. They had what it took to get the to get the result at the end of the day because they had the home fans behind them sure. and the experience. So you mentioned something. You said that you don't think this is going to play a part in the title race. But I have a question for you then. It's because I, I do believe it's an opportunity potentially missed by Arsenal. Even though this might not dictate, but it's an opportunity missed by Arsenal. Because imagine if Arsenal won this game at the Etihad. The, the type of doubt it would have created for the City players and maybe Pep and it would have put a little bit more pressure on them. Don't you think it's an opportunity missed maybe in this competition? Yeah, you could look at it as an opportunity missed, but how many times have Arsenal won the FA Cup? Arsenal have won the FA Cup even when they were down. For sure. So the FA Cup to them, I don't think it really they'll really miss it. Wasn't much. the cup more the opposition that they were playing against this morning? Yeah, I agree with the opposition. For me, I felt why I feel like you can't really say much from this game because um, Arsenal didn't really start with their best eleven, mm -hmm. and we saw the drop in quality when Thomas Partey left the midfield. For sure, for sure. And Man City played with their played with their first eleven with their strongest side. They had a strong team out there, but in the first half you could see that. Arsenal were a bit in control For of the sure. game. sure, they were the dominant side. Yeah, in so the first if you half. add a Zichenko, you add a Odegaard, and maybe a fit Gabriel Jesus, mm -hmm. it might be a different scenario on the 16th of February. Okay, so on one side, you can look at it like this because Arsenal made six changes, and City kind of showed us their, their, their best card, their most informed side is who they started in that game. And Arsenal went toe to toe with them. It was nil-nil in the first half. As you said, when, we lost, when Arsenal lost the likes of Thomas Partey, the game definitely changed. But I think with how Arsenal performed with six changes, they are growing confidence for that game at the Etihad on February the 14th or the 13th or something because of City couldn't really get behind them. And how often is it going to be a game going to be decided by a Nathan Ake goal? I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Regardless yeah, yeah. of the fact that I City won, it was kind of a bit of a... You know, kind of a 50-50 game in general, I think. Yeah, it was kind of like a 50-50 game. And, um, but City just had what it took to get the, get the job but, 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 but if you look at it, we, we saw a quiet Haaland. We saw a quiet Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Especially when Ho Holden had Haaland on lock in the first half. Saliba didn't even give him a sniff second half. So I'm looking forward to the Premier League fixtures. 100%. Well, obviously, keeping it in the theme of FA Cup, yesterday and now... Will we even call it a shock now, can it be? Liverpool lose again. And wow. to Brighton, surprise, surprise. Like, what is going on with Liverpool? Are we finally going to have a, a backlash from the fans and they start asking for Jurgen Klopp's head? Or does he have too much credit in the bank for them to ask for it? Um, Liverpool, like I said, <laughs> they, have pa they have passed their peak. And they need a total revamp. It's not just about the manager, it's about the personnel. I mean, if you look at Liverpool right now, you have the likes of Chelsea, Man United uh, and Arsenal upgrading their teams. Liverpool is still playing with James Milner at right back or true, central true, midfield. True. It tells you a lot about the team and about 
what's going on in that club right now. But they've made additions. Gakpo, nu uh, Nunez, um, Artemelo, who hasn't played yet. Yeah, but, the, but those additions, to be honest with you, they have not been good enough. And they have had injuries, yes. They have the, the Luis Diaz, Diogo Jotas, the Feminos, no problem. They have been, and Van Dijk, they have not been around. But it's still not an excuse. Because you knew going into this season, your squad needed refreshments. Yeah, you needed yeah. reinforcements. I just think, I just think the problem here is one, the board at Liverpool, they don't want to spend anymore. And the team has aged. The midfield needs runners, they need more legs. Okay. And they're not getting it done. Look, look at it from this perspective. I'm the board now, right? I've just seen this squad challenge for all four trophies. As much as even though they might not have got the investment they wanted, Klopp told us that they didn't need a midfielder before the end of the summer window. They got in a 90 million uh, target man, which is so unclopp like, um, and they brought a couple of other players in. So, as owners of the club, as fans, do you expect to go from chasing a quad to season over by January? That's still drastic, regardless of what you've said, can it be? Well, their season might not be over, they're still in the Champions League. Um, I still, th they're not in the they're gonna beat. They're gonna beat Real Madrid. You know, well, with the way Real Madrid is playing, you never know. It's but not I feel by, by, but yeah. about Real Madrid are favourites for that time. <laughs> exactly. Anyways. Yeah. But um, Liverpool this season, you never know what's gonna happen. Qualifying for the Champions League, making the top four is gonna be very tough. It's gonna be clubs. This is clubs' biggest challenge ever in his Liverpool career. Right. Even in, maybe in his managerial career, because to take Liverpool back to being in the top four is gonna be tough this year because the teams around him are not dropping points. Do you think it was, it's bigger than the task he had when he first came to the job? Uh, like, I think it is right now. Really? Because right now he has to set a standard mm -hmm. where he has to live by. And when you set a very high standard for yourself and you start seeing yourself digressing, the fans might turn on you, the media might turn on you, the players might stop believing in you, you know, and even the board might even say, okay, let's go a different direction. For me, like I said, they lost a very key player in Mane. Mm -hmm. They haven't replaced Mane. They can buy the Gapos. They can buy the Luis Diaz's. But Mane was a, was yeah, was the guy in, was honest. the guy in that team. He was the glue. Henderson is not good enough anymore. He's aged. Keita is not consistent physically to be fit. T Thiago Thi is the best player at looking good at doing nothing. Yeah, and Thi <laughs> and Thiago is not the most creative player. Van Dijk is getting his niggling injuries now. Joe Gomez is not solid. Trent is suspect. Andrew Robinson. Alisson makes the mistakes these days. He can't even keep but, a clean sheet. But this is not what people were saying last season. I hear what you're saying, Kenebi. These are the, how these players are performing now. But that's that wasn't the narrative last year. They had the best left back, the best right back, the best DM, the best forward, the best this, and they've declined. So my question to you is this: Liverpool lost that game to a Brighton side that have lost their three, four best players over the last six months consistently, right? Do you honestly believe if, as they say, these owners take over before summer, do you think with financial backing, Klopp is the right man to push them forward or they need a whole overhaul, the manager well, Klopp, Klopp as well? Klopp would be the man to push them forward. Klopp is the right man to push them forward because he has already proved in the past that he can do it. So why not? The thing about it is that right now, the transfer market next next summer whoever they whoever buys them or whatever Took in Bellingham if, as well. if Manchester United 2 gets taken over too the create the mark the market is going to be very very competitive For sure. because the Premier League right now is the is the Super League you're looking at Man U Chelsea Liverpool Man City maybe PSG all the Arab owned country if they are Arab owned fighting against each other for maybe one or two players mm -hmm. and it's gonna right it's gonna cause us crazy inflation in the market. For sure. For sure. So what we're saying I think the main thing here is, first things first, you have to get rid of what you have. Mm -hmm. You have to slow, start building again, like what Ateta has done with Arsenal. Yeah. It's going to be very diff difficult for Klopp. Obviously, money is going to help the situation. For but sure. at the end of the day, are you going to get your targets? Because the likes of Chelsea, they're sniffing around. And if you don't make Europe next season, you yeah. might not be that attractive. Very, very difficult. And I, I just think... History has shown us, as much as um, maybe Liverpool fans or Klopp fans don't want to believe, history has shown us the seven-year cycle with Klopp. Obviously, nobody wants to believe it is that, but it's evident. Like, he's just not the guy that can... If he doesn't strategically bolster the team as, the, as they're winning, he can't wait till they decline and then revamp the whole and, thing. And, 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 and you know what I'm saying? And if you watch Klopp over the years, he hardly rotated that team. Exactly. He kept on playing and playing and playing at high intensity. And 
it's only so much the body can take. They are human beings after all. So, like I told a, a Liverpool friend of mine, a Liverpool brother-in-law of mine, mm -hmm. they need to get new players. They need to revamp from back to front. For personally, I think they need a new manager as well because I think Klopp is a great manager, but he just needs a new project. And I don't think he's going to be able to get the best out of these Liverpool players. I just think he needs to go elsewhere, start well, again. Who replaces him? <laughs> That, that's for you viewers. You let us know in the comment section. If Klopp is to leave, who can he, who can they get to replace him? I have some ideas, but I'm going to leave it to the comment section. Maybe we'll revisit the topic next week. Speaking of Brighton, uh, first of all, we can't talk about Brighton or the FA Cup without highlighting what a match winner Mitoma was yesterday. I mean, what a hell of a goal. That guy just is probably the most informed left winger in the Premier League right now. Would you agree with that? Yep, 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 yep. Mitoma is taking the league by storm. He's taking Europe by storm. Hopefully, I hope Brighton will not put a 200 million price tag on <laughs> Well, you know what Brighton are like when it comes to negotiations. We are in transfer saga mode. They're a club that, I don't know what it is, their recruitment is absolutely exceptional. No matter how many players did they lose, they still have a, a chain of players like for like coming in, if sometimes even better. And there's, there's, there's a player that's really, really on everyone's mouth right now when it comes to transfer talk. That's Moises Caicedo. Uh, he's a player who's really come into promise over the last 12 months, to be fair. I mean, I heard Man uh, the likes of Manchester United could have bought him for five million two years ago, but they, they missed out on that. He was, uh, I think he went on a loan and then came back, came to, back to Brighton and he's been exceptional ever since he's been the, the side and he's really hit the ground running since January last year, I think. Like, first of all, what do you think about the player? Then we'll talk about the situation with the transfer. Well, he's a very good young player, a lot of prospect, very good high potential, um, maybe a bit overrated with the price tag, mm -hmm. but he's a player that I feel he will suit the Arsenal model. He's young and he, he can only get better. My issue here is, if you sign this player and with such a high transfer fee, mm -hmm. is the pressure going to get to him? Because, if, because the way it's going, it's looking like Arsenal might have to break that transfer record to buy him. Um, so if they buy him at such high fees, what, how is the pressure going to be on him? Because we've seen this before with the likes of Pogba, with the likes of Grealish, um, Grealish Anthony currently. All these players that are 100 million pounds. It's true. They don't do well, or they come in and they buck on that, or they or they or they it, cave under pressure. That's actually a very good question. I, I'll be intrigued to know what was the last player above eighty million to enter a major league that's done well in the first season. I'd like to know. I'm not saying there isn't, but I'd actually be intrigued to know. Can you think of anyone off the top of the head? Apart from, let me say, um, Tuchemeni. Tuchemeni wasn't even he's and, even he, and he was eased in kind of yeah, as well. I don't so. even think he's even that eighty million. You look at you look at Eden Hazard when he joined Real Madrid. Yeah. He flopped. I'm, I'm actually... Pogba didn't turn out well. You know, Harry Maguire. I'm thinking the eight, like, comment section to me. Coutinho. So like, many of them. 80 plus million players. Even Neymar. Neymar, Neymar, well. Neymar, 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 Neymar hasn't even won Arguably, he hasn't done well. The only PSG. guy we can even say is Mbappe. And, and they got him for free. And no? they, got him for, they got him on a loan. And they now paid. Oh, they paid the, and they paid. But Mbappe... Mbappe is the only 100 million pound player that we can say, okay, has actually delivered. And, and that's, that's massive because obviously growing up in Ecuador, he's one of, of 10 uh, children. Like, is that being a big fish in a small pond at Brighton, was that his comfort zone? Or can, can he raise his level to being at a, like a big team? I mean, we see, I don't know what's particularly going on with Basuma at Tottenham. It could be Conte's tactics. But he looks a different player than he looked, even though he didn't even go for that high price. But someone like Caicedo, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. He's an exceptional player, can play as an eight and a six. And he's exactly what Arsenal need to secure this Premier League title, I believe. But you're Is right. I, I believe so, because if, if he comes in, they have cover for Partey, which we saw how big the, the, the level drop was when uh, Lukonga came in the team. The Arsenal don't want to be using Xhaka as a, a DM because we saw how that, that went for his, his first few years at Arsenal. So I think his age, his profile, the positions he can play in, 
and his his clear desire to want to get to the top. He said he wants to be the most decorated Ecuadorian player. Not he wants to be a good player. To, to have something that specific as a goal, I want to be the most decorated Ecuadorian player. Says a little bit about his mentality to me. I don't know if you see where I'm yeah, coming from. Yeah, I feel you. But at the end of the day, let's look at it this way. Um, you know, agents, they also influence players. For sure. And Apparently, they said he's on £3,500 a week. Which is ludicrous. Most academy players don't really get that. They get more. And I think he wants to really, you know, expand his horizons and get more money in his bank account. And obviously, play at the top. For sure. So, for me, every kid, every footballer, that's what they dream of. So, you can't really hate on him for that. A hundred percent. But at the end of the day, in every transfer, you need three parties to agree. Yep. You need the player, you need the two clubs who are buying and selling. So... It's all down to Brighton. It's all down to Arsenal. Brighton, I've said he's not for sale. Arsenal are still pushing. For me, if it's going to boil down to ninety million pounds to get money, to get bro. Moises Caicedo to Arsenal for, for nine months, and is he going to be a starter? Is he going to bench either Shaka or Pati? Nope. So, it's, but he's it's, good enough to compete with their spots. Though. Yeah, he's Let's good enough honest. to compete with them. And it's it, it for me in the long run, it might look like a bargain if they win the league and make the Champions League. Yeah, but also they have to know that once they make a move like this, clubs are going to be looking at them and be like, "Okay, you guys have money now." For sure. So whenever you're coming for a player, this is the standard. Hundred percent. And and it's not just Arsenal that are in for this guy. It's also Chelsea as well. And you know, man like Todd Bowley is going to splash the cash Chelsea, everywhere. Chelsea are Chelsea are not really in for him. I think Chelsea are more they are concentrating their attention on Enzo Fernandez. I I I, I believe they were in for both. But where they start, I think Enzo was their main target. Yeah. Caicedo was like, okay, we're willing to spend money on this guy. Because uh, Chelsea have been super, super busy this January window. I mean, talk Chelsea about spent Arsenal. They spent $544 million. In total. In total. Then they spent about, um, I think, maybe 200 and something in January. Yeah, yeah. If and they get Fernandez, it takes them to 300 and something. And it's, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. They've got Felix on loan. They bought Badashile. Fofana, Mudric, Andre Santos, which I still don't even know who he is. Please let me know. Noni Madueke. Andre and Santos is the Brazilian midfielder. What position? He plays midfield. Central. Central. Okay, okay, okay. Big, big him up. Who did he play? For? Right, anyway. He's in playing but for the under 20. You Chelsea even fans know who he is. Noni Madueke. Uh, I, I would really hope for him to pick Nigeria to play for, but the way he's talking, he's very much a three lion right now. He's, he's going up through the English ranks. But anyway... They made all these signings. Like, what? What do you see as the plan for Chelsea with all these signings at this well, point? I want to believe Chelsea. They are planning for the future. They are looking beyond this season. Mm -hmm. Maybe this season is maybe like a transition period for them. Maybe they should just try and get into a, an European spot and see where it goes. But the way these signings look, they are very young players, 21, 22. They look like they are built. They are trying to do the Arsenal way, but sure. it's more expensive. But the only problem now I have is what is going to happen to the players that are currently there? How are you going to get rid of them? Because you have too many players to satisfy. And you know that every window, you have this money to spend. That means every window, Chelsea should be expecting maybe 7 to 10 players. It's going to unbalance the team. It is, the whole thing for me is crazy because I don't know any other manager that will be given all this talent and then be given another war chest of 300 million to, to, to spend. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy to me that, look, if you give me an Ancelotti, a Mourinho with that Chelsea squad, they're challenging for the league. They're winning it. Yeah, and the, way, the narrative Chelsea fans are making us feel is that oh, they have so many bad players in their squad, but these are the club world champions and Champions League winners, and they were supposed to challenge for the title last season with, with Lukaku. Like, I don't know about you, Sha, but for me, if any manager or any club is spending up to 500 million in a year, and the minimum Not is in, a in no, sorry, in a season, sorry, in a Not season. In a season, a couple of months. A couple of months. The minimum is, is top four, let alone, I'm a, I, I want a title challenge. Can you imagine that? That first year, Arteta came in, he finished eighth, right? The first full season. If if they gave him four hundred million to spend, would we dare say top four for him? At last now, no matter where we were in our in our journey, four million, four hundred million pounds to spend in your first summer, your first year as a coach. You got and, and you have control of who you. Yeah, you got to really. guarantee me top four and challenge, bro. I don't know about you. Well, um, like I said. Um, Chelsea, they're in a position whereby I think they're building for the future and we'll see how it goes. 
for sure. And if they get this Enzo Fernandez, 120 million, <laughs> the whole football world is going bonkers. So, our Niger boys, they play ball, especially when it comes to the Serie A league right now. Napoli and Antalata have two of the most exciting strikers or forwards in world football right now. First of all is Ademola Lukman, which I'm sure you're pri surprised to hear. He's got 12 goals playing for Atalanta on, on the right and the left wing. He's doing great things. Hopefully it benefits our, 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 our Super Eagles, which me and Kenobi were debating about earlier. But he seems to be pushing Victor Osimen all the way. Like, what's happened to our Niger boys in Serie A this year? Well, um... I think um, first things first, the Serie A has been more attacking in the last three, four years. Yes. It's been it's not more, as defensive as it's, it's not as defensive it's as, as it has been. And boys are now expressing themselves more. And from what I'm seeing, Osime right now, he's looking like the next drug bar. He's looking powerful, he's creating, he's scoring. More clinical than He's drug more bar. clinical. Well, so it's just, far. So far. Lukman himself, he's playing well. Atalanta is a great side. Great football great, inside as well. Great, Gasparini is a good attacking coach. Yeah. So I'm not surprised he's thriving or he has improved because 100%. Gasparini must have told him, look, you need to improve on this on your game, that, that. Because if you look at Lukman, Lukman has not had a home. Yes. He's been moving up and down, Leipzig, Leicester, Southampton, this, that, that. Mm -hmm. But now he's finally settled Set into a team and he's doing well. Yeah. For me, Napoli, they are the story of this season. And 100%. It's funny how Diego Maradona has died. Argentina have won a World Cup. Napoli is about to win a, win a, a Scudetto since 20, 30 years. Is it 20 years? No, 20 years now. 20 years, 20 years. Last time it was 1990 Nine, yeah. with Maradona. So and over 20 years. 13 points lead, beating Roma. And what a goal from Osime yesterday. What a goal. And Assisted Krava. And you can see that, man. Look. We don't even know where they will end up in the Champions League. It's, it's true, because that combination, Krava and Osimen, the, the, the way they're performing this season has been incredible. You can see, you can definitely also see Osimen might be playing with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, because I don't know if you, know if you remember the issue they had with the owner, where he was talking about signing African players. There was a little bit of issues there. So he has a bit of a chip on his shoulder, but also he, you can see he has the belief from his coach. His coach has told him, Yes, you're a footballer, but I need you to lead too. Like, you can see, I think what I've been seeing in the headlines is the Prince of Naples, Victor Seaman. Like, if you see how he walks around the stadium, it's like, it's his club. He's carrying them on, the, on their back. And as much as I think he's going to shoot them to the Scudetto this season, I also do believe it's his last season at Napoli, bro. Because as, as much as he seems at home there, I mean, when's the top clubs around Europe start circulating and throwing your names in, throwing different contracts and deals and money in the way and opportunity, his head's definitely going to turn, don't you think? Of course, but um, like Lukaku, Lukaku won the league with Inter Milan and he went to Chelsea. Mm -hmm. For me, I think, well, there's no... Would Napoli, you blame him? Napoli cannot offer him the kind of money like a Premier League team will. So I wouldn't blame him if he moves, and he's still a young guy. Mm -hmm. He'll want to test the waters out there. And 100%. he has been in Syria for like at least three to four three years. Three years, yeah. So he's, he's actually, he can, if he wins the Scudetto, he lives on a high. 100%. But who's going to buy him? Who, well, how much is he going to be worth? All right, if, if Mudrik is going for 100, Nunes is going for 100, and look how there's, like for example, Nunes, look how his season has gone. Not saying he's not a player for the future. Anthony going for 90, like, like we gotta talk 120, 150, no? We have to. I, I'm not saying he's worth that all, but the way the market has been played, placed, he has to go for 120, 150, no? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Probably 100, 150, and we all know the Italians don't sell cheap. Yeah, they don't especially sell cheap. Napoli. They don't sell cheap. Big up to so Simeo. Oh yeah, now my people, my people. They have it. episode 20 on round on the ground. It's been me. Your boy, Kunle, a.k.a. the Niger Englishman. And your boy, Kanebi, a.k.a. Mr. Kupo, Kupo. See you next week. Feel the heat.